Australia has become one of the most motorised countries in the world. One in every four Australian owns a car. Many, in fact, own two vehicles. Unfortunately, the price of such prosperity all too often is this. About 7% of road smashes in Australia are attributed to faulty vehicles, and this has recently come in for closer attention by police. There's a significant contrast in the United States, where cars only a few years old often are dispatched ignominiously to a mechanical graveyard. In the long run, it's cheaper for Americans to buy a new car rather than have it repaired. The shredded remains of a car which had no time to age. In Australia, it might be said that more latitude is shown. Ancient and derelict contraptions often continue their days far beyond a normal lifetime of service. You can have it for a song, and the customer who can't afford anything more resplendent might well be tempted to take a chance. So-called bomb yards have mushroomed in Australia. They are distinct from the dealer who guards his reputation by handling only good used cars. Even so, in most states, it's the customer's responsibility and not the dealer's to see that the car is roadworthy. The police traffic chief in New South Wales, Superintendent McCloskey, explained to ABC reporter David Pryor how police treat a suspect car. We issue what we call defect notices. And if the defect is so serious, then the vehicle is ordered off the road immediately. If it isn't so serious, then the owner of the vehicle is given so many days to effect an, an improvement. Superintendent, do the police inspect cars which are up for sale in second-hand car yards if they consider them uh, defective? Oh, not as a general rule. We do not enter second-hand uh, yards for this purpose. Uh, but uh, I feel that uh, the time is not too far distant then when we'll have this power. It's uh, most essential in my opinion. Some defective vehicles are weeded out by pre-registration checks and during pre-purchase inspection by motoring organisations. In New South Wales, nearly two million members of the NRMA are entitled to an expert inspection service for a moderate fee. David Pryor consulted the chief engineer, Mr Gaffney. Well, here it is, Mr Gaffney. Um, I bought it last week for £70. Uh, doesn't look too good, but uh, I think it's safe. Everything works. Uh, could you check it over for me, see if oh, it's safe? I wouldn't say it's a Rolls Royce. We'll have a look at it. Alan, uh, have a look at this car, would you, Alan? Check it over and see if it's quite safe and let us know later on, will you? OK. But is it only the old car which is a potential death trap on the road? Do you find um, uh, many rather modern cars which perhaps have concealed faults in them when they're brought in for inspection? We do get a few now and again. We've had one or two cases, uh, one about a month ago, where uh, one of the, the chassis members had rusted away very badly and been repaired with um, fiberglass. Well, now, that's all right for minor repairs on door panels, on uh, mud guards and so forth. But you put it in on one of these... Um, real bits of the chassis where it's got to take the stress and strain and it's, it's murder. That's the sort of thing that we do get. We had another, uh, probably even worse case about a year ago, which was um, almost criminal. The uh, chassis member had been um, covered up with grease to conceal the, the defect and wrapped around with brown paper. We took the grease and the brown paper away and there was just rust, nothing. It was absolutely criminal. Was this a car brought in by a prospective buyer, was it? This, this was a, a pre-purchase inspection for a prospective buyer. Uh, have you had any other hair-raising experiences with inspections? A few odd ones. Uh, one case where the, the steering wheel was so loose you could practically throw it out of the window. <laughs> Another case where the handbrake came away completely in your hand. You put the handbrake on, it just came straight away. Here in New South Wales, of course, uh, motorists have to get their vehicles inspected once a year before re-registration. Do you feel service stations or garages are the right, uh, right people to carry out these inspections? It's largely a matter of economics, I think. The, the system we have here, I think, is a very good one. But, of course, it is open to abuse. Uh, you can get a lot of fiddling of um, registration certificates. We come across it now and again, and we let the Department of Motor Transport know, and they follow it up. 
they have a problem in policing this thing. They have a limited number of engineers. If they had more engineers, it would be a better system. The alternative is probably a state-organized system, which would certainly be more thorough and perhaps, and yes, I think more efficient, but it would be terribly expensive. And that's really the crux of the thing. I think our existing system is a very good compromise. David Pryor's inspection has included a road test as well as a thorough workshop examination. Well, what's the verdict, Alan? Well, it's safe by way of visual examination and road test. What about rust? There's a lot of superficial rust. Anything deep down? Nothing at all, no. Brakes? Steering? Brakes are quite reasonable. Steering is reasonable. Uh-huh. And uh, the diff, that was, uh, was a bit of a rumble there. Yes, but uh, it'll give quite a lot of service yet, though. It will. Well, there you are. She's roadworthy, but um, looks as though you might have a repair bill or two later on. Young apprentices, such as students at the Sydney School of Vehicle Trades, are a safeguard against another type of vehicle defect, faults caused by shoddy repairs. Students at this school, one of the biggest of its kind in the world, are taught such skills as replacing body sections weakened by rust. Rust bucket is a descriptive term now in popular use, and Mr. Don Waite, the school head, has collected some startling examples. This patch is part of a fiberglass section used to conceal a rusted steel frame member in the car. It might well have caused fatal loss of steering control at high speed, but the fiberglass fell out and the car was condemned during annual inspection. Other exhibits show how structural rust has been disguised with plastic filler painted over. In this vehicle, fiberglass cloth had been stretched across the entire floor to cover gaping rust holes and support the driver's feet. The New South Wales Minister for Transport, Mr Morris, stresses that it's not necessarily the old car in which rust and other faults represent a menace. Here at his home in Newcastle, Mr Morris keeps his sedan in perfect condition. The car is 18 years old. Mr Morris rejects the idea that cars beyond a certain age should be banned from the roads. The minister says regular compulsory inspections are the best safeguard against the rust buckets that cause dozens of deaths on Australian roads every year. Yeah.